All right. <clears throat> now we're going to look at uh, the content from 2.10 or 2.10, adding and subtracting uh, mixed numbers. When we do it, we can do it one of two ways. We can do it horizontally or vertically. In the first two examples, we're going to do the problems horizontally. Now, when we have a mixed numbers, we could write it as an improper fraction, find a common denominator, and then add them together, and then work it backwards to get our mixed number. Now, when dealing with large numbers like this, the numbers can get a little bit too big and a little out of control. So what we can do is we can separate it. We have 23 and 3 fifths plus 8 and 8 fifteenths. So doing it horizontally, I have 23 plus 8. I just take the whole numbers and I separate them together. And then since I'm adding, I have 3 fifths and 8 fifteenths. Now, what I recommend is do the fraction portion first. The first thing we have to do in order to add or subtract fractions is they have to have a common denominator. And I see 15. I recognize it as a multiple of 5. So I have to multiply this by 3. And what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So I'm essentially multiplying by 1. So I have 9 fifteenths and 8 fifteenths for a total of uh, yeah, 17 fifteenths. Now, I didn't have to do anything other than that. There it is. But what do I notice? The top is bigger than the bottom. So why don't I take it a step further and write it as a mixed number? Because we started working with mixed numbers. Let's stay with mixed numbers. 15 goes into 17 once with a remainder of 2. My remainder remains over the divisor, 1 and 2 fifteenths. Now, I can do this addition. 23 and 8 is going to be 31. Well, I have 31 and or plus this 1 and 2 fifteenths. So I can go further and say, hey, these are whole numbers. I can put them together. 31 and 1 is 32, and then these 2 fifteenths. So we have it as a mixed number. Now, when it comes to subtraction, just like we learned when dealing with integers, that we have to be careful. We don't want to make any sign errors. So I'm going to split this up. I have 6 and minus 4. And I have well, 2 thirteenths, which is positive, and negative 7 26. Now, this might be a little uh, confusing. This negative sign here, because this is an integer, it belongs to all parts of this value. So I make the 4 negative. And I make the 726 negative. This negative belongs to both parts. Think of it as the distributive property. Now, I just have to combine them from this point. Always do the fractions first. Well, I notice I have to have a common denominator, because it is subtraction. And I say, well, 26 is a multiple of 13. So I have to multiply this by 2 over 2. So I get 426 minus 726. Now, in order to do this subtraction, I say, well, 4 minus 7, I can't take 7 from 4 unless I did some borrowing, borrowing because you know, we're working with other integers here. I can actually borrow because this piece of the number came from this. They came together. So I can borrow from this. I'm going to make that a 5. And now I'm going to add 1 to this. But it's a special type of 1. 26 parts of 26. That is the whole value. So if I add these together, I get 30, 26, minus 7, 26. And now I can do that subtraction. 30 minus 7 is going to give me 23, 26. And then I put it together with the whole numbers. 5 minus 4 is 1. 1 and 23, 26. Now, the most difficult thing about adding or subtracting mixed numbers is basically accounting. I have to be accountable for every piece, whether it be the whole numbers or the fractions. And I have to take it one piece at a time. And sometimes I have to go back to something else and pull something from it so that I can actually do the subtraction. All right, so be careful with this. This is going to take some practice to be familiar with it. 
So we looked at these two examples, and we worked them horizontally, or yeah, horizontally to get these values. Now we're going to look at adding vertically. These are the same two problems. So one uh, nice thing is we already know what our answer should be. We have 23 and 3 fifths plus 8 and 8 fifteenths. Doing it vertically might work a little nicer for us. It really depends on you and your preference. So the first thing we do is we deal with those fractions just like we did before. 3 fifths and 8 fifteenths, they have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to write it over here. I have to make this 15. So I multiply it by 3 over 3. So I have 9 fifteenths, and this is the 8 fifteenths. We have the 23 and the 8. And now we can just add them vertically. 9 and 8 is going to give me 17. 23 and 8 will give me 31. And now, just like we had before, this is an improper fraction. We can't have a mixed number and an improper fraction at the same time. So we have to say 15 goes into 17 once with a remainder of 2. 2 remains over the 15. And the one time that it went in, we add to this. And we get 32 and 2 15 That's the same answer we got last time. Now we're going to do the same thing here. Oh, that should be 2 13 6 and 2 13 minus 4 and 7 26. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, let's look at our fractions, make sure they have the same denominator. I have to multiply this by 2 over 2. So I'm going to write it over here. I have 4 over 26, 7 over 26. I have 6, and I have that 4. Now I'm subtracting them. And recall, I said this sign belongs to both of these. It belongs to the whole term. So it's 426 minus 726. Well, when we subtract vertically, we always borrow from the number before. So maybe doing it this way will help you keep track because it's something you're familiar with. Well, I need to make this more so I can find that difference. So I'm going to borrow 1 from this, and that 1 I'm going to write it as 26 over 26. And I can add those. They're like fractions. I made this 1 have the same denominator. So 4 and 26 is 30. And that 30, 26 is going to subtract, because this sign belongs to both of these, 7. 30 minus 7 is going to give me 23 over 26, their common denominator, now that I made that change. And 5 minus 1, because we borrowed, it's now a 5. 5 minus 4 is 1. We get 1 and 23, 26. Same answer as we got last time. All right, let, we're going to do two more examples. And then I'll give you a few problems to try on your own. But we have to be careful of these signs. We're dealing with integers. And even if they're mixed numbers, they're still integers. We can find them on our number line. We can do the same thing. If they have the same sign, it actually makes our life easier, whether it's positive or negative. If they have the same sign, we're just going to combine them. So I have negative 20 and 2 fifths, negative 30 and 3 tenths. I'm going to combine those. Negative 20, negative 30, negative 2 fifths, negative 3 tenths. And recall, that sign belongs to both pieces of this mixed number. So I make sure that that sign belongs there. Now, if we do the fraction first, I recognize 5 and 10 are multiples. 10 is a multiple of 5. So we've got to have that common denominator. So negative 4 minus 3, same sign combined, I get negative 7. This is 10, negative 7 tenths. Here, I have negative 20 and negative 30 for a total of negative 50. Now, because they have the same sign, I can merely combine them again. Negative 50 and 7 tenths. We just put them together when they have the same sign. Let's do this one vertically. To do this vertically, I'm going to write the larger number on top because I identify that these have different signs. So I need to find their difference. So I'm going to write the larger number on top, but I'm going to keep that sign with it, and the smaller one on the bottom, 42 and 2 9's. 
Now, if we do this vertically, we have to have that common denominator. We're going to work with the fractions first. But I'm going to keep in mind that this negative sign belongs to that. So I have to write this with a denominator of 9. So I'm going to make this 9 by multiplying it by 3 over 3. So I have 3 9's, but I'm going to remember it's negative, over 2 9's. So if this is negative, because it belongs to both pieces of this, I have negative 3 and positive 2. Well, I find their difference to be 1, but it's Larger value determines the sign, so it's negative 1 9th. And I'm just going to write it over there for now. Now I have negative 50 and 42. Different signs, I'm going to find their difference. The difference of 50 and 42 is 8. The larger value determines the sign. By doing it this way, I say, well, both of them have the same sign, just as they did in our previous example. And now I can just put them together. Same sign combine, negative 8 and 1 9th is our solution. Now, these two are for you to try. Notice this one has different signs, so you want to be careful. Don't make any sign errors. This one has the same sign. So make sure that you recall that these signs belong to the whole piece, both the number and the fraction. So try it yourself, and good luck. Thank you for watching.